today verifying trig identities or proving trig identities. Uh, this is usually done. This is actually not bad. It's kind of a pain at first. Uh, the first thing you need to know is that normally what will happen is you'll transform the left-hand side into the right-hand side. That is to say you will not be moving things across the equal sign. It's uh, kind of a really important trigonometric uh, convention. So I know that sometimes when we get in algebra, we want to move things around, move left and right, etc. We are not going to do that to the best of our ability. Uh, the other thing that's going to be really important is that you should have memorized or have a copy of your fundamental trig identities. And they're made up of kind of three sets of identities, and those are these. Um, those are the reciprocal identities, the tangent and cotangent identities is the second group, and the third group is the Pythagorean identities. Altogether, there should be eight identities. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, do me a favor, um, actually turn this video off and go find my other video that I, I think I did last year where I actually had them up on the screen. If you stop and copy those down, I think this would be a lot easier because this is not something you can do off the top of your head. So this is how we're going to do this first one. It says we're supposed to verify that cosine of theta times secant of theta is equal to 1. The first thing I'm going to do here is ask myself, what do these two things have in common? What I find out is that I could write cosine as 1 over secant, or I could write secant as 1 over cosine. It doesn't matter which one. So I'm just going to transform one of them. I'm going to leave my cosine theta the way it was. And then I'm going to transform, I'm going to transform this into something different. Remember, this is being multiplied, so this multiplication center here is this one. And isn't it true that secant, if you look at your fundamental trig identities, that secant can be written as 1 over cosine theta. And remember that we said that should be equal to 1. Well, what is cosine? Let me rationalize this, I guess. Cosine times 1 is cosine. 1 times cosine is cosine. And of course, cosine theta times cosine theta is equal to 1. All right? And we used, here we use the reciprocal identities. Reciprocal identities is the way we did this. So, all right, let's try another one that's maybe um, not quite Maybe one that's not quite as obvious. Let me see what we have. How about this one? Cosecant theta over secant theta is equal to, is it? Sure it is. It's equal to cotan theta. All right? So I think what we're going to do with this one, now this gets to be a pain. If you didn't know these identities, this would get really ugly. So cosecant, right? That's I think that's 1 over sine, isn't it? And secant is 1. 1 over cosine. So I'm just going to rewrite this. I, this is how I remember which is which. So I'm going to rewrite this. 1 over sine theta. 1 over sine theta is cosecant theta. This solidus or fraction bar right here is this one. And I know that secant of theta is 1 over cosine theta. Right? Now hopefully you're remembering this, that this is a complex, fractions, a complex fraction, and complex fractions look like this and are solved like this. We take the numerator times the reciprocal of the denominator. So, oh, remember that we said this should be equal to cotan theta. And if you notice, I'm not doing anything to the right-hand side. I'm just trying to convert this, right? Whoa, sorry. So here's my one over sine theta, one over sine theta, right? And I said that I was gonna take the reciprocal of this, and the reciprocal of one over cosine theta is cosine theta for 1, and remember that we said that was going to be equal to cotan theta. All right, I think maybe you can see what's going to happen here. 1 times cosine theta is cosine theta, and sine theta times 1 is sine theta, and we're saying that that is equal to cotan theta, and that is true. That is true, and that's based on simply the cotangent identities. So this is cotangent identity. And if you're wondering why I keep writing these things down, it's because uh, your professor may say to you, well, what's your proof that this is true? Well, this is an established identity, right? So we're taking identities that are not established and we're turning them into proven acceptable. All right, so let's try, try another one. How about this one? This one is just a little bit different. Let's try to prove this. Let's try to prove that 1 
plus cosine 2 theta times 1 minus cosine 2 theta. Oops, sorry about that. Not square theta, 2 theta is equal to sine squared 2 theta. Now, this throws people off really badly. So this, just to be honest, this is what I do. Because this is this 2 theta thing is going to screw with me. All 2 theta means is new theta. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to say this. Let x equal 2 theta. And then I'm going to go back here. And every place I found 2 theta, I'm going to put in x. x and x. It's just a lot easier on my brain because I'm, you're not going to do anything with those values. And I'm going to resubstitute that a little bit later. Okay, so now I'm just going to foil this out, right? And we have difference of squares here, so we're going to get 1 minus cosine squared x equals sine squared x. Remember this, when you do cosine theta times cosine theta, the answer is cosine squared theta as a matter of convention. The square goes here, okay? So look at this for a second. So Hopefully you're seeing this, you're like, of course that's true. Well, one of the identities that we're given in the book, one of the fundamental identities says this, says that sine squared theta, or sine squared x if you want, so sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So all I'm doing is this. I'm just going to rearrange this a little bit. I'm going to take negative cosine squared x, negative cosine squared x to prove this out. And we'll get sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. So isn't this the same as that? So our proof here is Pythagorean identities. All right. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to actually do one more video on the same thing. I'm going to do a couple that are um, probably a little bit more difficult, but let's we'll take a look at them, okay? Hopefully you're studying. Hang in there.